Hey guys, Pete here. This will be my Watchmen Episode 8 recap. The episode was titled A God Walks Into a Bar. All one word, no space. It was written by Jeff Jensen and Damon Lindelof and was directed by Nicole Castle. This video will contain spoilers for everything that's happened in HBO's Watchmen up until this point. So if you haven't watched Episode 8 yet, go do that first and then come back and watch this video. The chicken or the egg? The paradox. Which came first, the chicken or the egg? The answer appears to be both at exactly the same time. If you knew how a relationship was going to end, and if it was going to end tragically, would you still go through with it? In this episode, we find out how Angela and Dr. Manhattan got together, how he ended up hiding as the normal human being, Cal, in Tulsa, how Adrian Veidt ended up on Europa, and what the stakes are for the season, if not series, finale next week. We also got a sense of what it's like to be a god, or at least how this story's man who turned into a god, Dr. Manhattan, experiences time. Technically speaking, it's a pretty amazing bit of storytelling in that we get to experience the past, present, and the future just as he does. This makes it a memorable hour of television that even though it frustrated me at times in the sense that we knew how things were going to turn out, still managed to floor me in the end. Season 1 of Watchmen turns out to be a love story, one that ends tragically, and one that starts at Eddie's bar in Saigon. What exactly did we learn as we watched these two meet and watch Dr. Manhattan try to convince her to have dinner with him on the next night? Well, we learned a bit about John Osterman as a boy. We learned where Mr. Phillips and Ms. Crookshank's characters came from. And it turns out as a child, John Osterman and his father were fleeing Germany during Hitler's rise to power. On their journey out of Europe, they are helped along by a couple who live in the English manor that John uses as a model for his new world that he builds on Europa later. After the events of the squid attack and the end of the comic, he goes away to try to create life and we find out how that all played out. Dr. Manhattan created his Adam and Eve figures to be kinder and gentler, beings that were designed to care for others instead of themselves. He made them not in his image, but in the image of the couple that cared for him and his family and helped them get out of Europe. As it turns out, this got boring for Dr. Manhattan after a while. He says that all his creations want to do is please him to adore him. Their love was infinite, which is the very reason it's so unsatisfying, and why he had to leave his creations behind and return to Earth. During their conversation, we also visit Karnak, which was Adrian Veidt's lair in the Antarctic. We see there how he continued to create the periodic squid falls to help maintain world peace. And we get a pretty good idea that Lady True has been keeping that up since he traveled to Europa in 2009. When she took over his companies, they found out he was missing when they traveled to Karnak, so she would have found all that technology when they went there. In Antarctica, we find out where the device came that Cal had inside of him that we saw Angela pull out with the hammer in the last episode. We find out that the ring was something that Adrian made 30 years ago. It was plan A for amnesia. It was going to make John forget who he was, but because of the way things played out, he had to go with plan B, which was blowing him up which in the end didn't work and yeah we all know how that played out so the ring fits into the current timeline for john wanting to have a normal life as a human being with angela in exchange dr manhattan sends bite to europa so that he can experience the utopia that he was hoping to find after he saved humanity of course no one knows that he did what he did except for a handful of people so he's been kind of lost not knowing what to do with himself we see a pretty interesting shot of him when we first come in where he's pissed off because they're making more bombs when he's given them all these other options. You know, humanity is still continuing to make bombs. And we hear John say, as paradoxical as it sounds, the bombs make them feel safer. So we learn a lot and we pretty much understand how we got to where we're going. There's still more to learn about how things play out in Europa, of course. We get the end credit scene here where we see see that the Phillipses and Crookshanks just want Adrian Veidt to stay. They ask him if he'll stay and he says no over and over again as they smash tomatoes on his face. In his dungeon, the game warden brings in a cake. We notice that there are seven candles, which means it's the seven year anniversary of his arrival on Europa. The game warden explains that he was the 
very first one. He is the Adam created by Dr. Manhattan. After Adrian blows out the candles, he finds a horseshoe baked inside the cake and he starts to dig into the floor underneath his bed. Back in present time, we watch things unfold as we pick up right where we left off at the end of the last episode. We see Dr. Manhattan wake up. We see that the 7th Cavalry is outside. They have a tachyon cannon to transport him before destroying him. It also sets up its own paradox. As John's walking across the pool, which is probably important because he tells her that she needs to see him do that for later, he sends the kids away to be with Will Reeves at the Dreamland Theater in Tulsa. He explains that he's expecting their arrival because he told them about it back in 2009. In that exchange, John is still with Will Reeves back in New York. So Angela asks him, how did he know Crawford was a part of Cyclops? And how did he know that he had that clan robe in his closet? Of course, Will doesn't know because it's 10 years ago. So this sets up the idea, who killed Judd Crawford? Was it Angela or was it Will? To Dr. Manhattan, it doesn't really matter, but... To us, as viewers, we'd like to find out, I'm sure. In the end, they have to face the cavalry. There's the wonderful moment where John realizes that he's in love with Angela, the question that she asked him before. She's getting ready to go out and fight. And he says, I just told you you can't save me, and you're going to try anyway. It was pretty badass. They even gave this away in the trailer, and it still landed when you see it in the actual episode. Outside, she does her best to fight them all. Eventually, Dr. Manhattan has to intervene to save her life. And just when she thinks they won, a cavalry member steps up to the cannon and transports him away. So it is a really interesting episode of television. Perhaps I'm a softie, but I really dig the way they turned it into a love story. It makes me think about that famous quote about puppets. He says to Laurie at one point in the comic, We're all puppets, Laurie. I'm just a puppet who can see the strings. And there is a kind of symmetry here where in the comic, he is a human that turns into a god. Here, he is a god who turns back into a human. And for what reason but love? So where does it leave us for the final episode? We did get mention of a little elephant. Adrian Veidt says a little elephant told him that Dr. Manhattan was on Europa. That would most likely be Lady True, and that would likely tie her character into saving Adrian from Europa. It also makes it more likely, in my mind, that Adrian is the one she's referring to when she says her father. As far as we know, Dr. Manhattan is now in custody of the 7th Cavalry. Cavalry and Senator Keen. They'll be trying to move forward with their plan to turning Keen into the new Manhattan. But we don't know what Will's up to, and we don't know what Lady True's up to, except for that we know that she's getting ready to make her Millennium Clock go live. So it should be a pretty fantastic finale, seeing how Angela tries to rescue Dr. Manhattan, what happens with Lori Blake, how Looking Glass will figure in, and I think most importantly, what Will Reeves has up his sleeve since he has had quite a bit of time to think about this and work with Lady True, who's almost certainly on some kind of a plan to fix the world just like Adrian Veidt was trying to at the end of the comic. So let me know what you think in the comments. What do you think about this episode? What do you think about the big reveals? What did you think of experiencing time like a god, like Dr. Manhattan does? Do you think they pulled it off? Did you find it frustrating that you knew what was going to happen in a lot of cases? And if that's the case, do you think that was the point? It's pretty interesting when you look at it through that lens. How will it affect the end of the story? Is what's about to happen to Dr. Manhattan another black spot? Or does he know exactly how that's going to play out? As soon as the episode ends, I always go to the PD files to see what it can fill in and this time it's more of a mystery than anything else while it does at least in my opinion confirm that pd is lube man that part seems to come out in his writing about fog dancer the incident report the memo about nothing ever ends is pretty confusing it seems to be after whatever happens in episode 9 but i don't think it really gives us any answers as to how that's going to play out i'm going to have to go back and read it again and kind of pick it apart and see if there's something more that i'm 
missing. But when I first looked at it, I was like, wait a minute, is this a mistake? Did they put the wrong one up? And you have to look at it for yourself. But it's kind of interesting how they had PD look at the writing that he made about Fog Dancer when he was young and how he interprets that now. So it's definitely interesting, but not necessarily filling in any answers as far as I can tell. Overall, I really enjoyed this episode. I enjoyed the answers, the way they put all the pieces together of the puzzle that they laid out for us. In the process of writing this, I'm just finding myself liking it even more. It definitely tickles the part of me that loved this story and the way that it's built off of it. And the big picture stuff that they're doing with Angela's character, it's all becoming more and more exciting and rewarding from my perspective. The introduction of Dr. Manhattan certainly changes everything, especially after this episode where we get that from his perspective. But it feels like they're pulling it off, like they're pulling off being able to give us a story that hits home on a human level, even when it comes through that perspective of someone who was human and became a super powered individual, a god, through the choices that he made. As mentioned, I really want to see how this all plays out as far as Lady True's plans, how they line up with Adrian's plans, what he does when he comes back, what ends up happening with Lori and with Angela, and how they're going to wrap this whole story up. So please like this video if you enjoyed it. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you soon.